In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow in the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you, thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and, and walk in your ways to the glory Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit. And with this food, fill all the starving world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 55. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read responsively Psalm 145. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, Lord you are good to all, and your compassion is over all your works. 
The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes, the eyes of all wait upon, upon you, O Lord, Lord and, you and you give, give them, them their food in due season. season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are, you are righteous in all, all your ways and, and loving in all, all your works. You are near to all who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. You fulfill the desire of those who fear you. You hear their cry and save them. You watch over all those who love you, but all the wicked you shall destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless God's holy name forever and ever. The second reading is Romans 9, 1 through 5. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning with the 14th chapter. Now, when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there to abode to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. And when he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, his disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that we may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, We'll bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, and taking those five loaves and those two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all who ate were filled. And they took over what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides the women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Well, let's get back. Uh, someone asked, have you been here before? It seems like Pastor Bond likes to use me like once a year. So, uh, yes. And if you don't remember me, you were on vacation. <clears throat> there was a time in my life when I would think that I didn't have anything. Um, there wasn't much gas in my tank. I looked at the fridge and there wasn't much food there. And I didn't know what God was doing in my life. When I get to those points, I realize my life doesn't stop. You know, uh, you're, you're kind of wondering what, how you're going to balance everything. The emails keep coming. There's the phone calls. Uh, the next sermon needs to be written to find on the map how to get to St. John's. I mean, all those things are just kind of overwhelming you. <clears throat> and at those moments, I think, I know what scarcity is like. Because I'm just kind of stretched and worn out and tired. And then I read this gospel lesson. People reaching out for Jesus. They want a healing. They want, they want, you can just picture all of them reaching out to them. And I always think it's interesting in the gospel lesson, they only come with the men. Got, got that? <clears throat> so there probably was more than 5,000 there. But uh, they're all wanting something from him. How's he going to supply it? People wanting more and more and more, and he tries to escape, but cannot. 
reminds me of a fundamental truth. That the ministry I serve in Christ pivots not on what do I have or what can I give, but how much God gives by taking what I have and multiplying it. You've heard this gospel before. After the news of the murder of his friend John the Baptist and his cousin, he takes off for a quiet place to kind of collect his thoughts and I'm sure get recentered again. I can imagine there was a little mourning, a little praying, and a lot of just getting recharged. But the crowd does not stop. The needs, the issues are still there. And even though they stay late, the disciples are beginning to realize, being practical people, that, you know, if those Lutherans get hungry and there's no coffee, God help us. So send them away, Lord. Let them go to 7-Eleven or the Quick Mart and get something to eat. And what's his answer? No, you feed them. Picture yourselves as being Peter, James, and John. What? Look at those people. How are we going to feed them all? We don't have enough to even fill our stomachs. That's impossible. And Jesus says, bring your nothing to me. Bring those five loaves and those two fish. And he looks up to heaven where all goodness and blessings come from. And the rest is history. A miracle. The story reminds us that Jesus is asking us simply to use what we consider to be our nothing, our little talents, our little pocketbook or checkbook, our tired bodies. And he said, just bring them here to me and then stand back and watch what I can do with that. Now, always in the economy, there never seems to be enough. There's that stock market. Is it going to keep going or is it going to fall apart? There's not enough food. There's not enough water. And that's what we hear each and every day. Scarcity. Things are going to run out. Better take care of yourself. Look out for number one. And Jesus comes along with another kind of economy. It's God's economy. It's different than ours. So here's the challenge. Listen to the news. Listen to what the world is saying. It's scarce. We're running out. Be careful. Watch out for yourself. Think about number one. Or God gives more than we deserve. God is good all the time. That's a risky thought. The God of Jesus knows we have limitations. But out of our nothing, he creates something. From Genesis to now, God knows there's scarcity. There's not enough this or not enough that. My fridge may not be full, but God said, let's just look what's inside there and we'll work with what you got. Now that's not an invitation for us to be frivolous and to go out and spend this, then there's no tomorrow. Even after this experience of abundance, what do the disciples do? They gathered up the leftovers. <laughs> I don't think they had Tupperware then, but I'm, you know, they, they're going to reuse it. Made me think of a church I read, read about in Luther Magazine. Grace Lutheran Church in Phoenix is one of the oldest churches, Lutheran churches in Arizona. And it's downtown, kind of like St. John's. It's probably not in the best place. And they have a practical solution. They know people need to be hungry. So they offer a free pancake breakfast at 8 o'clock, and at 9 o'clock it's their service. And people come because it's free food. You know what? They've been doing it for years, and they've never run out of food. They can say, well, that's good planning or a good treasurer. No, no, no. It's just things appear. People bring stuff in. People hear about the ministry and want to be a part of it. Could St. John take a risk like that? Oh, you know, we're a stretch. I'm not sure the checkbook's got it. I'm, you know, we got to pay salaries and then the maintenance and everything. Oh, you're listening to the world. We don't have enough. We're running out. Things are scarce. Be careful. Or God's economy. God, who has the ultimate power in the universe, intends to have peace for the world 
God intends that hunger and disease end. He wants our families to be good and healthy. He wants the spiritual wholeness of all people. That's what we mean when we pray, thy kingdom come. Jesus told the disciples, you do it. Now he's saying it to us. St. John, you do it. Oh, we can't, Lord. We're, 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 I'm not sure there's enough money in the budget. And, and you know, oh, really? The hands and feet of God still need to be active in the world. God chooses not the work alone, but through people like you and me. To follow Jesus, to express our faith, do it in concrete acts of love and justice and compassion. It's no accident that Matthew tells us that when we meet Jesus in the clouds, uh, the action of reaching out, he'll say, well, did you live your faith? Did you look at the least, the lost, and the lonely? Or were you focused in on your own needs? So friends, why do we listen to the world? There's not enough. We're running out. Treasury's kind of short. You know, maybe we ought to be looking out for us. Or do we hear of God's economy? The world tells us to hoard and not to share. The world tells us to live in fear and not trust. We live in a world of scarcity, but let's not buy into it. While God is standing there just tapping us on the shoulder and said, let me remind you of what I'm doing in the world the abundance of my blessings and the kingdom of God we don't have to hoard there's always enough enough to meet the demand the question is do you believe that and do you live like that amen God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope. We confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Generous and compassionate God, we gather before you to pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of the covenant, call your church on earth to worship together, to glorify your name in every language and every land. Lord, in your mercy. God of abundance, who provides fields of wheat and vineyards of grapes, bless farmers and growers who furnish bread and wine for tables of abundance. Lord, in your mercy. God of all compassion, raise up leaders who care for the poor and the hungry. Let nations share your bounty across the world and assure that no one goes without food. Lord, in your mercy. God of all, fill those who are starving, whether they long for food or companionship. Comfort the lonely and grieving. Heal those who are sick in body, mind, and spirit, especially those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. God who satisfies, bless the feeding programs of this congregation and the community. Be with sandwich bakers and cookie bakers. That those who stock food pantry shelves and those who point our need, whether it's in our neighborhood or halfway around the world. Lord, in your mercy. Bless us as we remember the saints of your everlasting feasts until we join with them at your bountiful table. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands we place all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, trusting in the mercy of Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be with you, always. Share that peace. Do I get a hug? Are there any hugs? Oh, oh I do, I do. Peace. It's peace.
Please stand. Let us pray. Merciful God, you open wide your hand and satisfy the need of every living thing. You have set this feast before us. Open our hands to receive it. Open our hearts to embrace it. Open our lives to live it. We pray this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should, at all times and in all places, give thanks and praise to you, almighty merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Redeemer and healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants, animals, seas, and stars were whole and well in your praise. When sin scarred this world, you sent your Son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. So we remember, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took a cup, and he gave thanks and gave it for all the drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant, and my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his act of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we wait for that day when all the peoples of the world will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us in this meal, as grains scattered on the hillside become one bread. So let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, and the, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Please be seated. given to you. The blood of Christ shed for 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 you.
I have the gluten-free bread. The body of Christ given for you. 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 given for you. Have we gotten everyone?
those who are taking the homebound communion would please come forward. Gracious God, loving all, your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah and heavenly bread, assist those who set forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are homebound. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who receive this sacrament, and give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Okay, now I get nervous. I'm going to open this up to announcements. <clears throat> Are there any announcements that someone wants to share? Figured there was. Good morning. I went shopping this week, guys, because um, believe it or not, summer's almost over with. Three weeks from tomorrow, Echo School Drive is going to start putting together backpacks for school for those who can't afford to get their own. I went out and bought folders, crayons, erasers, pencils, spiral notebooks, and I only spent $6. And if you're going out to look at school supplies, that's not a lot, but you can get quite a bit for that amount. But. Um, the foundation has been generous enough to give us a grant and as well as a matching grant. The matching grant is for $500. So if you don't want to go out and spend $6 and have to go to three different stores to get these items, you can put $6 in an envelope and it's going to buy twice this because Echo can go out with twice as much money to get this stuff. So if you want to go shopping, go for it. It was kind of fun. But if you don't like to deal with the crowds, we're going to piggyback off the sermon today. Multiply your money by putting it in the envelope, put school drive with it, or write a check out to St. John, put school drive in the memo, and the money will double with the foundation's grant request. So, so the Lord does provide. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. Okay, I'm going to be a little out of touch with things because I've been gone for a week. I, I just got back from a week at a Boy Scout camp out in Ohio and it's been a wonderful week with a lot of wonderful people. And it's a, it's a fulfilling experience. Uh, men's shelter sign up. I uh, haven't had a chance to look at it, but please take a look at that. We start on the 27th of this month. And could be the last time we actually host here at St. John if the, the new shelter building proceeds. They would like to open at the beginning of November, but I do not have an update on that because I've not been in touch with anybody. Church softball, I know they won last week. We have two games tomorrow night, and I believe they're at 8 and 9 o'clock, but I'm not 100% sure about that. So if anybody has any questions, please get a hold of me. Thanks. Just on behalf of the congregation, just want to thank you for serving oh, here this morning. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank, thank, you. thank you. I think we're ready for the last hymn. Probably stand for that.
The Spirit sends us forth to serve. <laughs>